Hello, everyone. This is Jason Hill with Word of Promise Ministries. Thank you so much for joining us today as right now we are in the middle of a series where we're talking about the church. And we're talking about the church from so many different aspects that we actually uh, recently came out of a series where we were talking about or within this series on the church, a mini series where we were talking about being baptized into the body of Christ, where the Holy Spirit takes us through this process of making us these functional members of the body of Christ, where we operated differently prior to prior to Christ. We lived, functioned, thought acted differently uh, than what God has now called us to in Christ. And so the Holy Spirit has to take us through this process of making us this functional member of the body of Christ, where now Christ can live and dwell and operate through us, making us totally different. And what we learned during that series was the fact that actually what is happening with us by the Spirit of God can also be labeled as a maturing of us a maturing of us so it was a perfect segue to begin a series now or a mini series where we're talking about maturing in christ and in this series we're going to talk about again that whole maturing process what it's called what it looks like how it comes to pass what happens uh, as there's immaturity there and people stay in that immaturity, we're going to talk about that and the benefit of being mature and some of the labels and the names and the operation that a mature Christian uh, walks in and is called to. And so to see exactly some of the things we're talking about regarding this maturing in Christ, I want to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting in verse 1, to see some of these terms that uh, the Bible uses speaking of this maturing in Christ. And he starts off Paul speaking. He says, and I, that's Paul, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal. So clearly here he uh, labels uh, again or has this contrast with spiritual people and carnal people. He says, he says, as to babes in Christ. So another thing that we can notice here is that he of relates being a babe in Christ to being carnal and also relates being carnal to being a babe in Christ. Again, going back to that uh, terminology of maturity, a baby would be what? Immature. And so he says, but as to carnal, uh, as to babes in Christ, he said, I fed you with milk and not with solid food. He says, for until now, you were not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able. He says, for you are still carnal for where there are envy, strife and divisions among you. Are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? In verse four, he says, for when one says, I am of Paul and another, I am of Apollos. That's the strife right there. He says, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believe as the Lord gave to each one? And so what we notice in this grouping of scripture, Paul talking about, again, this example of people being spiritual versus being carnal and these carnal individuals he said he equated them to being babes in christ who he could only feed milk to them and not solid food just like a, a natural baby he said again what was an example or a representation of them still being carnal was the fact that there was envy and strife and division that was among them and the fact that they were behaving like mere men. And he used, of course, the example of some saying I'm of the Paul camp, some saying I'm of the Apollos camp. And Paul is like, I didn't, I didn't die for you. I, I didn't save you. I was just a vessel. Me and Apollos, again, were simply vessels through whom the Lord used to bring you to faith. And, uh, and so he said, but these people, uh, were a representation of them in carnal was the fact that they had a camp 
that they were particularly a part of. And so what I want to do right now is I want to look at, again, some of the attributes that this scripture helps us to see is an attribute of an immature Christian, an immature Christian. And so the first thing I, I want us to notice is that he says that they are carnal or of the flesh. That word carnal, again, is the same Greek word for flesh. So he's saying that they are carnal. We're going to talk about, uh, again, what that means. He says what? They behave like unsaved mankind. So he's saying that they're still operating and behaving the same way that they did prior to Christ. The same way that unsaved mankind operates is how these individuals uh, who are immature are operating and number three he said that these immature individuals are unable to eat solid food they can only feed on milk just like a natural baby can only feed on milk but well, he says that that's what these immature christians were they were only those that were like babies who could feed on again only milk and could not eat solid food and so i want to look at these three things when we're talking about being immature in christ but the main thing i want to talk about today is this they are carnal the terminology that he uses in calling them carnal and so again i want to talk about the carnal christian we have a lot of thoughts out there where some even say that that's uh, not a possibility of a person being a carnal christian when paul just said uh, that that is the case. And so I want to kind of break down what it means to be a carnal Christian and again, how that represents immaturity in Christ Jesus, where that isn't what where God wants us to be. That's where the entirety of the world is. But when the Christian is that way, they are considered immature and carnal and they're still operating the old way that they use to operate and that's what he says here back in in verse three he says this he says in verse three for you are still carnal you are still carnal meaning you were that before and there's supposed to be a transition out of that but you are still over there and that's again a picture of this immaturity you were this prior to salvation you were carnal and again, through this salvation process, through what God is doing, there's supposed to be a coming out of that. But you are still carnal. You're still that way. And so I want to look at a couple of scriptures because just like I said before, this word carnal is the same Greek word for flesh. It's the exact same word. So I want to look at some words uh, uh, or some scriptures that help us to see what it means to be carnal by seeing what it means uh, to, to, again, do some things uh, by the flesh or in the flesh. And so let's look at Romans chapter one, excuse me, eight, verse one and verse four. Look at what he says here. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So I want to pause right there. Notice what he says here. You can walk according to the flesh you can walk according to the flesh and he contrasts it with walking according to the spirit again this goes back to what did we read back over here in first corinthians chapter three he said i couldn't speak to you as spiritual people but as to carnal he's almost saying the same thing here you walk according to the flesh or, or again carnality or you walk according to the spirit. He contrasts these things as this is what people's walk is. And he says the same thing Peter does over here in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 10, where he says, And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. And so again, notice here, he, as Paul does, negatively represent um, walking according to the flesh as something that, again, shouldn't be what a Christian is operating in. They shouldn't be walking according to the flesh. Again, instead, walking according 
to the spirit. And so as we understand that, we're going to see again that all of mankind walked according to the flesh. And when we came to salvation in Jesus Christ, again, God has called us now through immaturity, through, excuse me, maturity to now begin to walk according to the spirit. But the person who still walks according to the flesh is who Paul labels as being carnal. And we're going to talk about that. And again, but notice what he says here that I highlighted uh, Peter saying about those that walk according to the flesh. They are self-willed, meaning their will is based out of themselves. Uh, that's going to be really, really important. Their will, what they will uh, for themselves to do is going to be out of self. It's going to be out of self. They are self will those that walk according to the flesh so let's look at again what it means to again walk according to the flesh or to walk what does that mean if you just think about it again it's what the pathway a person is going down they're walking down something and look at what paul says over here in ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 he says and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world. Let me pause there. Paul here is showing what the difference of a person that was what dead and sins and trespasses. He said what we who are made alive that are those that are in Christ Jesus. He says who were dead in sins and trespasses. And when we were dead in sins and trespasses, what did we do? We walked according to to the course of this world. That was how we walked prior to Christ. Oh man, we're going to see something. And then he says what? That this walk according to the course of the world is according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Who is he speaking of here that is the prince of the power of the air? This is Satan. So this course that all of unsaved mankind is walking on is what according to Satan. It is according to what Satan has put in place. And we're going to see that in a second. He says this is the spirit now who works in the sons of disobedience. These again, the unsaved individuals, the sons of disobedience. And then he says among whom also we all conducted ourselves. So he says what well, all of us conducted ourselves when we walked according to the course of this world. We conducted ourselves in the lust of our what? Flesh. There's that word flesh again. We, our conduct was by the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. Paul says what? That this is what our walk was in us being dead in sins and trespasses uh, prior to Christ. We walked according to the course of this world that was put in place by Satan. As a result of walking this course, our conduct was a byproduct of us attempting to fulfill these desires of the flesh. I hope y'all see all of this connection. Our behavior was now a result of these desires or lust of the flesh that were formed in us that again determined what our behavior was when we walked this particular course. Now he says here that this course was put in place by Satan. Satan was the one who was behind this course. And he, and he also uses the terminology of what? Of being dead and sins and trespasses and trespasses and sin. And so what does that connect us to or make us think of, of what some Satan did, Satan did, some things Satan did that again was now the result of a person being dead, being dead? Well, of course, we can go back to Adam and Eve and what God promised them prior to their fall, he said, if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he said, what? That you will surely die in that day, in that moment, you will die. 
And so what does Satan do? Satan came and he deceived Eve and convinced her to do what? Here it is right here in Genesis chapter three, verse six. He says, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, what, what caused her to see this? The fact that Satan deceived her. He deceived her. And again, and he set her and him on this particular course because of it. Now watch this. He said that, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. Then, so as soon as they ate of the tree of the knowledge of, the good, of good and evil through the deception of Satan, through him deceiving Eve and convincing her that this is going to be good for you. It's pleasant food. It's going to make you wise. It's going to give you the knowledge of good and evil where you'll be able to determine and be wise enough to determine your own life and be like God yourself. That, that was the deception. Well, soon as they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it says, verse seven, then the eyes of both of them were open. So their eyes were closed prior to this. Their eyes were open and they knew that they were naked. What does this show us that their eyes were open to themselves? That's when he says here that they knew that they were naked. Their eyes were open and they knew that they were naked. It showed that now what their focus was, was upon themselves. Now their walk is going to be determined by and uh, of their focus on themselves, their consumption and being consumed with themselves. And look at what he said happened after they saw that they were naked. He says, and they sold fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. So their behavior now is based on this newfound focus on themselves. This is the course that they're following. This is the walk that they are on now. They're focused on themselves and now all of a sudden their behavior is a byproduct of their focus upon themselves and they sold fig leaves together and made themselves coverings and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And so what did they do? Their behavior now, the course that they were on was a course where they were focused and consumed with themselves. And now their behavior was a byproduct of that. This is again what it is talking about when he says that we walk according to the flesh. Flesh, again, if we understand the terminology, is just what? Self. It's just mankind is being consumed with me, me, me. And that is now the course that they were set on. And it's the same thing when it comes to all of mankind. All of us were consumed with ourselves. We will focus on us, what we have to do, what we have to make happen, what we have to accomplish, what we deserve, what we're supposed to have. And our in the entirety of our behavior is a byproduct of us walking that course. That were, that's where all of us were. And so what happened? We then came to salvation in Jesus Christ. We trusted in him. But do you think that all of that just changed where now we just totally don't have a focus on ourselves anymore? No, there's this process and this growth where we go from being focused on ourselves to being focused elsewhere. And Paul then would label the carnal Christian as the person who is not growing in that and they are still fixed upon themselves. Their consumption is still on themselves. They still walk according to the flesh. That is what they do. Their lives are now based because they walk according to the flesh is based on the flesh instead of the spirit. And so this is what he's speaking of when he's talking about, again, a carnal Christian. Their walk is according 
to the flesh. And so when we return, we're going to talk about more of what Paul says about people being carnal and the result of it and what reflects that. I'll see you in a second. All right, we are back. And as we left off, again, we were talking about the carnal Christian and the fact that the carnal Christian walks according to the flesh. Their walk now, as we showed over here in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6 through 8 now, is a walk now where their focus is upon themselves. They live now through the lens of themselves, their focus, what they're consumed with. And again, this is where all of mankind is outside of Christ. And God says, now through faith in Christ, you are made a part of the body of Christ. You are united with Christ. But what does that mean that all of your focus now just automatically change just because you got saved? No, there's this process of growth where now your focus goes from being consumed with yourself to now being consumed elsewhere that we'll talk about eventually. But again, the carnal Christian though, is the one who stays stuck over in this direction. See, so many times people, when they think of carnal Christian, they merely make it about just out there and sin. And we're gonna see in a second that it's just not about out there, being out there in sin, that that in sin is the result, it's the end result but being carnal is being consumed with yourself in whatever way that you are. That's what a carnal Christian is. He makes it about man. And so again, that's what happened with the deception of Adam and Eve or, or Eve and her giving it to her husband was that what Satan convinced her that again, this was going to be good, but it ultimately focused them and caused their eyes to be upon themselves and for now them to live their lives based off of that. And it shows us that as well in the scripture of this being consumed with in your mind and in your thinking with yourself. And it's called being carnally minded or to be fleshly minded. Look at what Paul says here in Romans chapter eight, verse five. He says, for those who live according to the flesh. This is right after Paul had just mentioned in verse four about us walking according to the flesh. It's us now living and our, our walk is determined according to the flesh. What is he saying? That those individuals who live according to the flesh, they set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit, then he says, for to be carnally minded. Now, again, he just defined what carnally minded is. It is to set your mind on the things of the flesh. Or, again, it's to be fleshly minded or to be carnally minded. He says again, uh, uh, for to be carnally minded is death. Is death. It's that same death that God promised them. What's going to happen to them if they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that they would surely die. Well, he's saying for us to be carnally minded will have us still operating in that death that was found in Adam, even though we're saved in Christ. And this is the need for that maturity to take place so that we're still not operating in what we, again, were purchased out of by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And he says in verse six, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. And so again, he says here, for the carnal mind is enmity toward God. If you think about what happened with Adam and Eve after they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it says what? And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, just like he did prior to. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from God because of this newfound focus on themselves. What did they do? They made themselves enemies of God in their own thinking, even though God had received, had accepted, was walking with them because they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Their focus was now on themselves and they in their own hearts again made themselves enemies 
of God. And that's what he's saying here. For the person who is carnally minded, who is consumed with themselves, will make themselves an enemy of God. Because again, the carnal mind is not subject, is not in servitude to the law of God, nor indeed can be. The person who is consumed with themselves will never accomplish the standard that the law is there to set. And so they will always have this guilt-written, condemned conscience before God. And this is where the world is, even though they try to suppress it. But for the Christian now who has placed faith in Jesus Christ, who hasn't, though, allowed the maturity to take place, to take their focus off of themselves to Christ, which we'll get to, again, that person will still walk around in guilt condemnation bondage so many different things because their focus is on themselves they are consumed with themselves they're carnally minded and again that is the negative aspect of again being carnal being this immature christian that you will have so much in christ that is provided for you but again you through guilt condemnation will still be consumed with yourself and never feel again accepted enough to be able to receive everything that God has provided for you again a negative aspect of that and look at what he says over here about being fleshly minded Paul uh, in Colossians chapter 2 verse 18 and 19 it says let no one cheat you of your reward taking delight in false humility and worship of angels intruding in those things which he has not seen look at this right here he is vainly puffed up in his fleshly mind let's pause right there he is puffed up which means what he's high-minded he's prideful again what makes him prideful <laughs> again the fact that he is consumed with himself and he really thinks he's doing something and so he's puffed up. He's speaking of, again, these individuals who want to teach you these doctrines that are, again, carnal, ultimately, that are still self-consumed, self-focused. He says he is puffed up and he, through you listening to what he's saying, are going to become puffed up as well. But look at what he says about him and ultimately what be true of you if you are going to be carnal and listen to these doctrines that make it about you and make it about self. It says in verse 19, and he's not holding fast to the head from whom, from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God. Now notice what he, he says here that this puffed up fleshly minded carnal individual is doing who is still consumed with themselves because they're consumed with themselves because they're they're fleshly minded their mind is set on the things of self what are they not doing they are not holding fast to the head who's the head jesus christ they are self-dependent just like we read uh, over in second peter they are self-willed they are making it all about them and their accomplishments and what they're attempting to do is for God, even if it's for God, instead of it being God working in and through them, doing his great work where you rely and completely hold on to him doing it. That is, again, a picture of immaturity. And that's why he says that because they are this way, they will not grow with the increase that is from God. That is only from God, that only God can do. The change that only he can bring about won't happen in their lives, he says, because they're not holding fast to the head. And the reason why they're not holding fast to the head is because they're puffed up by their fleshly mind, by their focus on self, themselves, their focus on self. And so let's look at this and see what we have come to realize so far about this being carnal this immature christian that is carnal we said what about the carnal person or the person that is of the flesh well they a they live based on a focus upon themselves this is how paul would identify a person that was carnal he wouldn't simply or merely say it's just the behavior but he would say if he saw 
a presentation of being focused on yourself. When you make it about man, when you make it about the things man can do and what you can make happen and what you can accomplish and what you have to do, again, that is a reflection of the fact that that person is carnal. Uh, we said B is what? They don't hold fast to Jesus as the head. That is, again, another, neg another negative aspect of being carnal is that you will be puffed up in your fleshly mind and you will, instead of holding fast to Jesus and relying solely on him, and him alone and that will be reflective in your attitude it will be reflective in how you respond and speak to other people where you will reflect one that is totally and solely dependent on jesus christ well a carnal individual won't be that way they'll still expect themselves and others to just be able to do because you can just do because you can just get it together you can just fix it Terminology like that, mindset like that is reflective of an immature Christian, a carnal Christian. And see, we said what? They don't grow with the increase that is from God. People can claim all day about their growth and how much God is going to do in their lives. But as long as they are still relying on themselves, they're still listening to doctrines that just make it about them determining within themselves, being self-willed to get themselves together. As long as that is the mentality, they won't grow with the increase that's from God. They will be puffed up, as it says here, in their fleshly mind. They won't hold fast to the head and therefore they will not grow with the increase that is from God. This is again, the immature Christian that yes, thank God, they came to faith in Jesus Christ, but they're still at a place where they're listening more and more to doctrines that make it about me instead of Jesus Christ. And they are carnal. And that's what Paul was attempting to repair and fix over in Corinthians. And that's why he said uh, again over here, in verse three of first Corinthians, he says, for you are still carnal for where there is envy, strife and divisions among you. Are you not carnal? And listen to what he says and behaving like mere men behaving your behavior. Now, he says, is just like the unsaved world. And that's the next thing I want to look at. Number two is the fact that an immature Christian it behaves, they behave like mere men. They behave like the Gentiles operated prior to Christ. They behave like the Jews. And see, people don't get that part. Like the Jews operated prior to Christ is how they operated or still operate in Christ. They still operate that way. They are, again, carnal and they behave as mere men, like mere men. So let's look at some scripture that shows again behavior and its relationship to being in the flesh or walking according to the flesh or being carnally minded. Let's go back over here to Ephesians chapter two, starting in verse one, where he says, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walk according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. And so we talked about that walking according to the course of this world, that course where your, your focus is on yourself, you're consumed with yourself. And so he says, now, what is the result of people doing that? He says, among whom we also, he says, these people, these sons of disobedience who walk according to the course of this world, among them, we also, he says, all con once conducted ourselves. Here's behavior. Here's the behavior. We all once conducted ourselves. Look what he says. In the lust of our flesh. That's that flesh again. That's that carnal again, carnally or fleshly. He says, look at what our behavior was a byproduct of. Uh, he says, we conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, that word in is the same Greek word for by. Uh, and I think it should have been translated as by there, by the lust of our flesh. Our conduct was a result of or by this lust or this desire. 
working in us. The word lust there is the same Greek word for desire as well. And that's why he goes on to say we were fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And as a result of that, we were by nature children of wrath, just like them. So he says here that all of us, everybody in this world, that's including us Christians, at one time we walked according to the course of this world and our behavior now was an attempt, he says, to fulfill this desire working in us. See, if you understand, a person that commits adultery, there's a desire that's on the inside of them to have an affair with that other person that now actually having the affair is the attempt to fulfill that desire to sleep with that person, to fornicate, to lie. To lie is a result of a desire working on the inside of us that now our response in lying is out of that desire, us attempting to fulfill that desire. It even goes back to what happened with Adam and Eve after they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What did it say? They sold fig leaves and they hid themselves. It said that they did this out of shame. They did this out of fear. That was what was working in them and their conduct was a byproduct of that. And so he says here that this was the case for all of mankind because all of mankind walks according to the course of this world. Well, what happens to the Christian now who now trust in Jesus Christ? But they still walk according to the course of this world. They still listen to doctrines and lines of thinkings that make it about themselves. It's going to be the same pattern of, again, their conduct being a result of this desire working on the inside of them because their focus is on themselves. That that is the root of it. I wish that so many people could really understand where behavior stems from. It's not just a matter of making a choice to do this wrong thing or do that wrong thing or do the right thing and do this right thing. It is a byproduct of where your heart is consumed with that determines what you desire, that determines ultimately what your behavior is. Even if, again, your focus is on yourself through the lens of the law. And that's what Paul shows us right over here. Look at what he says over here in Romans chapter 7, starting in verse 14. He says, for we know that the law is spiritual. He says what? But I'm carnal. That's that word again. I'm of the flesh. I'm walking according to the flesh. He says, and when I'm a carnal, I am sold under sin, under slavery to sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do that I do not practice, but what I hate that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. What is Paul saying here? Paul is saying that there is good that he is wanting to do that the law says do. There is bad that he doesn't want to do that the law says don't do. And he says, I am trying to will myself to do the good and not do the evil. He says, and he says, and if I do uh, what I will not to do, many, if I do something that I am attempting to not do, then he says that is, he says that that reflects or that shows that I am in agreement with the law. But see, here's the problem. And he's going to continue to show that. Look at verse 17. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Now watch this. For I know that in me. Then he clarifies that is in my flesh. Oh, my. He's saying that I know that in me that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. So what is he saying? He's saying, yes, I know that when I am operating in the flesh, when I'm walking according to the flesh, I know that in the flesh dwells no good thing. Dwells no good thing. He says, and this is how I know. He says, for to will is present with me. For me to try to will myself to do the good thing is there. I'm trying not to do it. He says, but actually how to perform the good. He says, I, I do not find. I have no idea how to actually accomplish that. He says, for the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do. He says, that is what I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. And remember, he clarified that in me. 
that is in my flesh. And so he's saying that again, that him now uh, trying to will himself to do good in this self-determination, in this self-will only garnered him the inability to do what it was that the law was saying. And he goes back to show this, that what was actually happened was, happening was the fact that he was attempting to live according to the law. And the law made the focus and emphasis of his mind him instead of Christ Jesus. Look at verse four of Romans seven. He says, therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. He says, and here it is, verse five, for when we were in the flesh, what is he talking about? We walked according to the flesh. We were carnally minded. All of this, again, is what, what took place prior to Christ, what we operated in, in prior to Christ. But at the same time, what we can still operate in, in Christ, we can still live according to the law. We can still walk according to the flesh. Look at what he says. He says, for when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit unto death or fruit to death. And so he shows us here again, a person attempting to live and walk according to the old course that people were on, primarily the Jews. The Jews walked according to the flesh in the sense that they tried to live according to the law. The Gentiles walked according to the flesh in the sense that they tried to live according to their own philosophies, their own thinking, but in both cases, they were consumed with themselves and it never garnered the righteousness of God. It never garnered what was truly to be accepted by God. And it will be the same thing for the Christian who is now saved, but still attempts to rather live according to the old principles uh, of, uh, 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 of the, the, the basic principles of the world, how the world thinks, even if the world is trying to deem to do something good, is still self-focused. Or if they attempt to live according to how the Jews live, which was according to the law, is still self-focused and it won't get that Christian again, to be able to truly walk in what God has called them to. And if they stay that path, then they will continue to be carnal. They will be immature. They won't grow in Christ Jesus. And so as we return next week, we're going to talk more about this carnality in Christ. Again, so many people simply make it about the behavior, but the behavior is nothing more than the fruit of the direction of that person's life. And so I will see you guys next time when we talk about that. God bless you, and I'll see you next time.